thirsty desert, a very dry place, a gloomy place, a place of trouble and sorrow. And nothing seems to give that uh, thing like grief. I've seen people in my tenure of doing what I do in the seven years of being in the death care industry, I've seen grief take people through a cycle of emotions. They go through anger, they go through regret, they go through highs, they go through lows, they go through desperation because they're, they have to get used to a new normal. They've had a loss, this thing called death. So many of you right now under the sound of my voice are going through that valley of tears, that valley of desperation, that valley uh, uh, that has you literally wanting to sit in the room with the lights off, with the doors closed, would not come outside, sometimes to not even get out of bed. This is a word to you, that God can make your gloomy place a fountain. God can make your world of tears and fears into a place of comfort. You can overcome grief. Uh, David, when he lost the baby that he had from Uriah's wife, David, uh, uh, it said when David knew that the baby was dead, it said then uh, in 2 Samuel 12 and 20, it said then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worship. Look, folks, I know that life may have dealt you a blow. I don't know what your loss may have been, but death is, as, li as I like to say, death is the elephant in every room, the thing that everybody's thinking about but nobody ever wants to talk about. Death, that thing called death. Well, you know, when, with the first death, people in, in Genesis chapter five, people lived hundreds of years. And then one chapter later, when because of the evil into the ant in the anti-diluvian anti world, the time before the flood, man's days were cut down to 120 years. Or how about Psalm 90, when Moses, uh, Moses' prayer, Lord, teach us to number our days. And God said, a man's days are three score and 10. And if they, by reason of strength, they be four score years. Uh, uh, or James, the book of James, where he said, what is man's life? It's a vapor. Look, folks, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. We, we have to deal with this thing called death. Death, so many of us have to fight battles with this thing called death. Psalm 30 and 5 that says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But in dealing with the death of a loved one, a de dealing of a close associate, a dealing with the death of a child or, or a close friend, we must have the resolve that we have from 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would ha not have you ignorant, uh, brethren, this is what Paul wrote, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not either as others which have no hope. Look, folks, we have a hope. We have a heavenly father. If grief is to make weighty, if grief is to burden us down, let's never forget what the eagle-eyed prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 10 and 27. The words are recorded and it shall come to pass in this day, in that day, that his burden shall be taken off of thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. We serve a God that still heals, that still delivers and still sets free. And if we're believers in this thing, if we're believers, that we're gonna have to trust God while we're walking through the very valley of the shadow of death. I remember when I was a little child growing up in church, you know, back in the day where preachers still preached about heaven. Before we start preaching all of this seven steps to your breakthrough, 18 uh, steps to manifest, and 42 steps to get your boo back. When people used to preach about this place called heaven, a prepared place, for a prepared people, a, a place where, where a street, they had streets of gold, gates of pearls, walls of jasper, uh, a place where there's no death, no, no pain, no toil. We preached about a place called heaven. And, and I, I, I sat under the late Bishop G.E. Patterson for years. And he shared, uh, to hear him preach a eulogy was one of the most awesome experiences ever. But I heard something about this thing called death. I didn't hear it from his mouth. And he could make you literally see heaven itself. He would talk to you about a city that is lit 
uh, not by MLG and W, not lit by the S-U-N, but literally lit by the presence of the S-O-N. But I didn't hear the greatest thing that I had ever heard about death. What I heard about death, and I've heard many uh, great uh, expositors of the word share on this thing called death and grieving, but I heard one of the greatest things ever just being a fly on the wall in a conversation between a young mother that had just lost a child and an old mother that had lost her child 25 years earlier. The young mother told the old mother, said, I know with time the pain will go away. And the old mother looked back at her with all the mother wit and all the wisdom in the world. And she said these incredible words. She said, no, nah, baby, the pain doesn't ever go away. She said, time just teaches us how to deal with the pain. And then I thought about what David wrote in Psalm 61 when he was at the lowest of the low. He said, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. He said, from the ends of the earth doth my heart cry out to thee. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. May that same rock that kept David when he literally wanted to put his shoes on his head and his hat on his feet, keep you and keep yours and keep you through this season until time teaches us how to deal with this thing called grief just a little bit better. Child of God, my brother and my sister, you can overcome grief. We have a God that still removes burdens, that still heals, that still delivers, that still sets free. And in this tough season that you're going through right now, I submit to you, child of God, that grief can be overcome. It may take time, but who better to go to than he who holds time in his hand? He who has the patent on time. I can tell you this from all of my days, and I can tell you this with assurance that I don't know what tomorrow may hold for you, but I can submit to you with all the boldness in the world that I do know who holds tomorrow. You can overcome grief. God bless you.